Hi, I'm Carl, and in this video we're going to be having a look at questions 32 to 35 or unit 11 of the third section of the blue booklet. This is a question uh, about the incubation of bush turkey eggs. We're given quite a lot of information on a graph, so it's worth looking over that before we get into this. But question 32 says, according to figure one of the following, the greatest total amount of oxygen consumption occurs when? So looking at figure one, we've got uh, three lines here of oxygen consumption against embryonic incubation. And we can see that the um, greatest amount uh, will happen later on in, in the incubation period. Um, so the greatest total amount of oxygen consumption uh, would be on the highest line here. Um, so that is going to end up being uh, the Mali file instead of the bush turkey because the line is a little flatter in that case, so the average oxygen consumption over that period is going to be higher than you'd see for the bush turkey. Uh, so the answer for this one is going to be A, it occurs in the Mali file between day 50 and day 60. So question 32, the answer is going to be A. If we look at 33 then, it says according to figure 1 of the following, um, what estimate is closest to the total amount of energy produced by the Mali file? during its 60 day incubation. So this one is um, quite tough if we're going to be having a look at um, a curved graph that isn't that easy to read. I think it's best just to simplify it. So we're going to be looking at the Mali file. So let's just simplify this into this graph here. So there's a sigmoidal curve that we have here. Um, and I'm going to draw just this other axis in here too. So this on this side is going to be the oxygen consumption, which we're not that interested in for this question. This is going to be the metabolic rate. And this is going to be the time. We have a sigmoidal curve here that we can use to work out what the amount of energy produced would be. So it would be the area under this line that would give us our answer here, but it's difficult to do that um, with the sigmoidal curve, especially in this case. So we can simplify this to a straight line and we can see that we end up with a triangle. Um, we know the height of the triangle is roughly 0.3 and the width of this triangle is gonna be 60 days. So we can work out the area of this. Um, so if we've got 0.3 um, joules per second, if we times that by 60, that's what it's going to be per minute. And then 60 again, that's going to be per hour. And then multiply by 24, and that's going to be uh, per day. And then we need to multiply it by 60 again. And that will give us over the 60 day incubation. So that's um, per second, per minute, per hour, per day, and then per whole incubation. Um, and because it's the area of a triangle, we need to do a half times all of that. And then that will give us our answer. So it's worth maybe trying to, um, like, I think approximate this at this point. So 60 times 60, you might already know it's going to be 3,600. If we're going to multiply then by 60, um, we can approximate that um, to be roughly 210. So that's um, three of these sorted now. If we're multiplying by 24, um, it's quite difficult, but if we multiply it by 100 and divide by 4, then we can get something that's a bit closer and we get um, so 2, 1, one 2. And we want to divide this by 4, and that's the same as multiplying by 25. Um, and that's going to give us an answer of 0.3. Then we want to multiply that by 0 0.3 and a half. So let's multiply it by half first. So if we divide that by 2, then we get, uh, yeah. And then we want to multiply that by 0 0.3. And that gives us an answer. Or multiply by 0.3. So 27 times 3 
is going to be uh, 81. So it's going to give us 81. Okay, so if we look at our answers now, um, this is pretty close to 700 kilojoules. So if we took out, um, oh, I've added an extra zero in here. So we've got 810 times 10 to the 3, and this is going to be the kilo bit of the joules. So this is roughly 800 kilojoules. And the best approximation then um, with that is going to be answer C in this case. And if we look at question 4, or 34 then, it says which one of the following features present in the bush turkey is least likely to specifically suit the bird? Um, so we're told that it's pretty well developed whenever it um, hatches from the egg and it doesn't really use its egg tooth, it uses its feet instead. Because of its parenting approach, its parent uh, doesn't look after it um, like other birds might, meaning that the um, bird has to be very developed whenever it hatches. And so it doesn't need the egg tooth, instead it uses its large feet, uh, as we're told. So the answer for this one is going to be 34, because that's a um, feature we're told that it has, but doesn't really use. And so that's going to be A for this question. And then 35 is a little bit of a tricky one. It gives us these four graphs here um, that I've copied out. And it says which one of them could be used, uh, could be labelled um, as such here. So where the x-axis is going to be uh, the difference between the mound temperature and the incubation temperature, and where the y-axis is going to be the heat produced in the mound minus the heat lost. So this one, um, I think, seems a little more tricky than it is. Um, let's have a look if we were to draw our own graph to try and work out what's happening here, because we're given quite a lot of information. And the final temperature of the first paragraph tells us um, a good bit. So all of these graphs have zero points on them. So when we're drawing ours, we'll put some zero points on and work out what this last sentence can tell us. It says that mine temperature is below the stable incubation temperature. The rate of heat production in the mound is faster than the rate of heat loss from the surface of the mound. Okay, so that's, that's quite complicated, but it basically says that the mine temperature is below the stable incubation temperature. So um, where X would be negative then, where the incubation temperature is greater and it's being taken away that means this x is going to be negative so we're on this side of the graph here um, the rate of heat production in the mound is faster than the rate of heat loss and that gives us then a positive value for y so we can assume that there's going to be a point up here at that side um, and then it says the reverse is true above the incubating temperature so um, on this side of the graph the heat loss is going to be greater than the heat produced and so we end up with a point down here and so then we can draw a line to see a trend and we can see that it corresponds here to answer D. So the answer for this one is going to be D. Okay, so that was questions 32 to 35. I hope that helped. Thanks for watching.